So when we talk behind somebody's back and assume that this backbiting and slandering, what we we should think of it, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, I. Uh, would you prefer that you should eat the flesh of your brother who is dead? In other words, you know, there's a certain culture they do that. This is what how horrendous this thing is that if you talk to some about somebody backbiting, slandering, and gossiping, is like as if you're eating the flesh of your own brother who has passed away. Rather than respectfully give him the funeral, you ate him. Allah and be conscious of Allah. In Allah Tabab Rahim, indeed Allah is all relenting and merciful. So backbiting, slandering, and gossiping is as if a person is eating the flesh of his own dead brother. This is how horrendous this sin, sin is in the world. In the hereafter, it is in the Prophet's hadith that he said that when you backbite on the day of judgment, a person will come with the good deeds and all those things with the flowing uh, uh, hold kind of bringing all the hajj and all the sadqa and the, and the fasting and all those good deeds will be mountain coming with him. And then there will be few people will be holding his cloak. And that just a scale of judgment will be established against him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a judgment scale is established, that person is doomed because now this person has to justify. So people will, will be asking Allah, do the justice today, you have promised the justice. And this person will be pious, righteous, and all that. But this sin of backbiting and slandering is so easy and simple that we do it without even thinking. So what happened, well, that person will say, Ya Allah, he took my property, he forcefully took my land, he murdered me, or he stole from me, or cheated from me. Those will be given their deeds. But then the person will, the backbiting and slandering will come and will say, Ya Allah, he, sp he spoke ill of me. So this person says, will say, Ya Allah, I need justice today. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give away his salah, his fasting, his hajj, his charity, all the good deeds he, will, he has done will be given to those people. And Allah will ask them, are you satisfied now? They will say, no, Ya Allah, we are still not happy. Then Allah will say, well, he has nothing to offer. They will say, Ya Allah, we want justice. You promised justice today. So then Allah will put their sin of those people in his account. So this man came as a winner and victorious, and he's now ending up among the losers. At that time, they will ask, Ya Allah, we still are not happy. So Allah will say, now I've given his good deeds to you and your sin to his account. You are still not satisfied. Hadith narrates another place. That person will say, no, Allah, I'm still not satisfied. I want more justice. Then Allah will ask him, that raise your head and he will see a big, huge, beautiful palace in the paradise. Allah will say, do you like that? Allah, he will say, yes, ya Allah, I will like, I, but this could be a prophet, a, a messenger and some righteous, pious person. I'm a sinner. How could I be uh, given this palace by you? Allah will say, you will get it if you forgive your brother. And that time person will say, yes, Allah, I forgive because he will be rewarded best which you would not expect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will serve the justice. In other words, the person who came in as a winner will be in end as a loser. And other hadiths in similar context that Allah will say, if you forgive your brother, both of you will go to the similar place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us in that day and in that situation after the judgment will be done. So for us, it is very, very serious matter. As a Muslim, we should not take it lightly. Let's listen to the verse number 13. يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم O oh mankind, we have created you from a male and a female, and made you into races and tribes, so that you may identify one another. Surely the noblest of you, in Allah's sight, is the one who is most pious of you. Surely Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing to the entire mankind. Now this is what the beauty of Islam is. Islam claims to be the religion of humanity. Allah is saying, 
Oh, you mankind, we created you from a male and a female, Adam and Eve, and made you among tribes and nations so that you may know each other. So no Madi is as a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu is La Fakul Arab Al Al Ajam Wal Al Ahmar Al Al Aswad Wa Al Al Arab Al Al Ajam. So uh, no one, even a slave, is superior to master in the eyes of Allah. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying, We created you from different races and ethnic group and religious and languages, so that you may know each other. Inna akramakum in the Allahi atqaqum. The most righteous among you is the, in, the, in the sight of Allah is the one who is conscious and have taqwa with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Inna Allah alimun khabir beshak Allah. Indeed, Allah is all knowing and all aware. So this thing proves that from Adam al Islam to Jesus and the Israelites and Muhammad uh, among Ishmaelites, peace be upon him, and all of the prophets who came before them into all the nations, Allah sent till Ibrahim al Islam, Allah sent messengers and prophets in every nation. After Ibrahim al Islam, Allah Ta'ala sent all the prophets among his descendants, which was Ishmaelite and Israelites. So this is where we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you are different tribes and, na and nations, not that because you're superior or inferior race or by color or by knowledge or by education or by looks and appearance. The, uh, the most righteous, uh, honorable in the sight of Allah is the one who is conscious of Allah, who does righteous deed and believe in Allah and his messenger and all the messenger of their time and the final and last messenger. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. So those are the most righteous and pious in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Islam claims the humanity. All the superheroes of humans were from Adam al-Islam to Jesus and the Israelites and from Muhammad sallallahu in the Ishmaelites. These were the superheroes. They were the special men who were given the message, who were communicated through revelation and scriptures and the angels talked to them and they were given a special honor and respect. They should be spoken respectfully. They should be treated honorably and they should be obeyed as the messenger and commanding uh, officer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are messengers. So listen to the verse number 14. <laughs> The Bedouins say, we have come to believe. Say, you have not come to believe. Instead, you should say, we have surrendered and the belief has not entered your hearts so far. If you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not curtail the reward of any of your deeds in the least. Surely Allah is most forgiving, very merciful. So verse number, again, uh, 14 is very important to understand. There was a tribe whose name was Banu Asad bin Khuzayma. These were villagers or what you call Bedouin people who came to Prophet ﷺ when there was a famine. And they said that... Um, we testify for the truth of uh, you as a prophet and believe in Allah as a God and we fought with you where other people um, uh, uh, other people were fighting with you so give us the food and we fought for you we, we supported you so give us the food and because we deserve and they said that we believe yes that we have Iman Allah SWT says you didn't do any favor to anybody you did favor to yourself when you become a Muslim. Nobody beg you to be a Muslim. And if you do not become a Muslim, then you will be having eternal punishment. So don't come and, uh, and pretend that you did a favor to my prophet. This is what something we should understand as a Muslim, that when we believe, we believe because of our good, not for anybody else's good. And sometimes we try to see and fix other people. Our job is not to fix other people. Our job is to dawah, invite and share the knowledge. And it is between that person and Allah. We cannot be judgmental. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, uh, just say we have embraced Islam. These were the newcomer to the Islam and they were trying to show the favor that they were Muslim and they did a favor to Prophet. Uh, at this moment, Iman, the true believing faith has not entered into your heart because if you were so, then you would not be complaining. 
You will not be bickering and moaning and telling that as a favor you have done to profit by becoming a Muslim. So as a Muslim, we should accept it. Samina wa ta'ana. We heard and we obey. Usbiru wa sabi wa rabitu. Be patient, persevere patient, preach patient and hold together. Lallakum tuflehun so that you may prevail as what is the situation right now. Many Muslims today in America are afraid to say that the Palestinians have been persecuted. They have been living in apartheid and occupation and concentration. This is a concentration, literally open air concentration camp they have made. What there was done by a uh, German to the Jews, today Israel, state of Israel is doing it. We are not saying Jews, we are saying state of Israel, which is again wrongly doing it. So, if you believe in Allah and obey Allah and His Messenger, la yalitkum min amalikum shayya. So, if you obey Allah and His Messenger, He will not curtail the rewards of any one of your deeds. In Allah ghafurun rahim. If you do good, you Allah will give you the reward. But don't come and show a favor that you did to my Prophet. So, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is answering on behalf of Prophet when these people came in and asking for help, even though they say they are believer. Had they been a believer. They would have come and request humbly, not showing, talking to pay, pay Prophet like we did favor to you by be, becoming a Muslim. So nobody does a favor to Islam or Muslim by becoming a Muslim. That person does favor to himself or herself. Allah is not, faith is not cheap. Faith is easy. It's not cheap. It's not a begging for becoming a Muslim. It's an invitation, not charity. People treat religion as a charity. A man came to a sheikh and he said, I need to learn Islam. So what was uh, the reply was from that sheikh, uh, this person, sheikh was that treat Allah at least as if you are treating yourself. And he said, what do you mean? How could I treat Allah like myself? That's insult. He said, no, what I said is understand it. So what he did is this man stayed as a guest in the night. So one night he gave him food and that man ate the food and did not leave anything. And a man came on the door for knocking and he did not care for him. Second day, when other person, he said second day the food came in and he ate it and the knock food was, uh, there was uh, another person came knocking on his door for the bag, for the food and he gave him leftover food. And third day, when he came to the uh, sheikh, he said, you kept me for two days as a guest and you sent me food, I appreciate it, but uh, you said to me that uh, treat uh, uh, God more than, uh, at least like myself. He said, yes, what I meant was, when this person came to you asking for food, you didn't even share food with him. So you did not, and this man was asking in the name of Allah, so the name of God. So you should respect other, at least you, what you treat, you think you should be treating yourself. You could have shared food enough that was there for the two of you. Second day when you did is, you did not invite him, you give him the leftover food. You did not give him the food which you had with you, the half and half of it. So it, he said that is the God's calling you for taking care of things because God does not eat, it does not need food of wealth and money. But God sent his people to judge you on the day of judgment, you'll be questioned that day. God will say that day when a person was sick, that was me. That person who was a needy was me. That was the day when person asked for help was me. So as a Muslim, we are being told by the scholars that respect and humbly treat everybody with respect let's listen to the verse number 15 <laughs> Believers, in fact, are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger, then have no doubt and struggle with their riches and their lives in the way of Allah. Those are the truthful. قُلْ أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ Say, would you apprise Allah of your religion, while Allah knows all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, and Allah is all-knowing about everything? يمنون عليك أن أسلموا قل لا تمنوا علي إسلامكم بل الله يمن 
They oblige you that they have accepted Islam, as if it was a favor shown to you. Say, do not oblige me for your accepting Islam. Rather, Allah makes you obliged for his having guided you to the faith. If you are truthful, shh. Surely Allah knows the unseen of the heavens and the earth, and Allah keeps in sight whatever you do. So, from verse number 15 through 18, same thing which I explained earlier, I need not to repeat it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding this thing in the verse number 15. That real believers are those Aminu Billah, those who believe in Allah, wa Rasulullah and His Messenger. Wala Yartabu and they do not doubt. This is the most important thing. When we get into doubt, we can we can have the doubt, but we not need to make it wrongly expressed. And there's a people who came to Prophet, they said, Ya Rasulullah, when we come with you in your company, we believe and we feel humble. But when we leave, we get a whispering in our thoughts. And the, and the doubts come to our high, uh, mind. So Prophet says, because you are believers of shaitan, this devil put the whispering in your ears. But if you have a doubt in question, say, Allah is right, messenger is truth, and Allah is the truth. And I will try to clarify and ask Allah. Sometimes you ask a scholar and they cannot satisfy your question. So you should ask Allah that Salat al-Hajjat make two uh, wudu, two raka units prayer for the need. And then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, guide me. And after the salah, make a dua. Make a supplication, Lord, guide me. I'm having doubt in my heart. Allah will definitely answer you. And nuwajahadu bi amwalikum. And struggle with your wealth. And anfasikum and in your bodily. In other words, there's a call for financial and other way. Your time, your quality of life is spent with the others taking care. And also, if it comes to war, take up the arm and defend for the good, for the righteous, just war, which is known in English or Christian language, just war. So, in the path of Allah, these are the truthful people. This is something very detailed. That I can go on for a long time to discuss and explain. Truly understand that the jihad of Muslims is 24-7. And that the minor jihad, that's a major jihad because we do not want to get up to pray. We do not want to take time out to pray. We do not want to take time out from extra of our needy and uh, our comfort level. And once we see extra, then we spend. We should spend whether we are affluent or we are in poverty. قُلْ <laughs> أَتَعَلَمُونَ And uh, that uh, say, would you appreciate Allah for your religion? I mean, yeah, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَتَعَلَمُونَ بِدِينَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَاللَّهُ وَاللَهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَالْ so you, you want to, uh, Allah knows what is between the heavens and the earth. And Allah is aware of everything, whatever is there. And يَمُنُونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا And you do uh, think you oblige Allah by becoming Islam or Muslim. قُلْ لَا تَمَنُّوا عَلَىٰ إِسْلَامِكُمْ عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامِكُمْ Do not tell, O Prophet, Allah is telling the Prophet to tell them that on behalf of Allah, that you are not doing any favor upon Prophet or Allah by becoming Muslim. But it is the Allah who had done a fear upon you. In Hadakum Lil Iman in Kuntum Sadaqim that He guided you to the Islam and Iman if you are truthful. In Allah Yalam al Ghaiba Samawati wal Ard, Allah is the one who is aware of the unknown secrets of the heavens and the earth. Wallahu Basirum Bimata Amalun. Indeed, Allah is watching. Allah is watching. Allah watch without eyes. Allah hear without ears. Allah sees without eyes. So Allah is watching and Allah is knowing and Allah is aware. Allah has the knowledge without making efforts this is the difference between Muslim and a non-Muslim that they believe when we become Muslim we did not do any favor on anybody we did actually favor upon us ourselves so this is the truth of Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may guide us we'll stop at this one inshallah next Sunday we will meet together and we'll discuss the next chapter of the Quran uh, there was a comment I could not see I guess it's good that people talk bad about me <laughs> Nobody should talk about anybody. If they do talk about you, that's their loss. They are lost. Basically, you are earning their deeds without efforts. <laughs> and nobody talks bad about you. Alhamdulillah, everybody loves you. That we know. 
nobody talks bad or ill about you. You are a very beautiful person. You are beautiful physically. You are beautiful emotionally. You are beautiful, beautiful in your mind. We all love you. We love you to death. Don't think you are any lesser of a child. Okay? So you are the most beautiful person we have known. May Allah accept you. I'll stop here. And if you have any questions,